Jolon True Centurions, and welcome back to another episode of Star Trek Command. I'm Ramprass Wilson, I'm Fleet Admiral Turk and the heavy battlecruiser IS Flamapena as we continue our campaign against what remains of the Hydran Star Kingdom. And the Hydran Star Kingdom has, as far as we know, only a single colony left at the, se at the sector of 413. And it only has an Empire defense of 30 left to go, so let's just jump right on into things and see if we can't annihilate the target. So we are currently driving X-type heavy bombardment cruiser. These things are phenomenal pieces of deadly equipment. And uh, we will hopefully be crushing our way through the enemy without too much trouble. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Uh, there appears to be a single planet on the horizon. Although it would be really interesting if we had binary planets. as a PLPA, so it will actually be defended a little bit. Scoring off against the heavy cruiser and RNX. No other targets at this moment. But that doesn't mean they may not show up. We're gonna do a quick check. Make sure that we are actually traveling a little bit otherwise faster than we normally can. Oh yeah, because I didn't set these to enveloping mode. <laughs> Let's do that now to make sure that we can fire with all the force of multiple suns. It's way more fun that way because you can really crack down on the enemy. Where are other dreadnought? Uh, what? Oh, a little bit of lag there. Where our other dreadnought had a little bit of trouble actually, you know, crashing someone once, you know, firing the heavy bombardment plasmas through their shields. This one does not have that concern. In fact, we've demonstrated we can actually kill heavy cruisers in basically a single salvo. So that's kind of what we're going to lean into a little bit because we can and we care. So we're about to get into the range where we can fire our pseudo plasma torpedo in order to trick him into doing exactly what it is we desire him to do. And so we will immediately break off to port. He has a couple of fighters, but I'm not all that concerned about them just yet. So just actually should dump it. Yeah, I figured you'd do that. So he did offend to fire everything as we ducked into cloak. I'm going to re-duck out of cloak, re-duck out. Uh, well, 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 we'll duck out of cloak and we will come back on around. We'll increase the speed so we can zip around the location. Uh, mainly because I kind of want to get a little bit closer to these fighters, see if I can't bait them into shooting me early. That way it's a little bit of a safer assault run on him. Okay, defensive plasma torpedoes have engaged. Start to slow down, start to turn on in. Plasma torpedoes are ready to go. Wait for him to fire. Please fire now. There you go. And now we will get all of our plasma torpedoes off on him. He will not be able to defend himself and we'll dump back in the cloak. Because that's what a good Romulan captain does. There goes all of that. They tried to shoot down that, which means they're completely pointless. The fighters tried to shoot down our plasma torpedoes and failed. So now we decloak because we've got a fairly decent angle to go in on him. Phasers set them to overload and we will go in on the target. Ah, uh, yeah, he's dead. <laughs> Gatling phasers immediately opened up and wiped him out. Good hits on target already. And we will duck back into cloak because that's what we can do quite easily. Did manage to get a couple of accurate shots onto us, which is a little, little bit unfortunate. We'll wait for the fighters to pass on by and we'll, you know, duck, duck out of cloak once again and see if we can't wipe them out in one go. But I am going to wait until they actually, you know, are easy to kill. Okay. There we go. So they fired everything they've got, and now we'll wipe them out quite easily. A little bit of light fire into our stern shields, which is obviously not less than ideal. But now that we've dealt with that, we can start turning around on you. And buddy, I gotta tell you, you're not in good condition. So I don't know if he knows that, but he's currently suffering from a bad case of everything. If I can actually get the range in just a little bit more, I can open fire with my Gatling phasers, because as long as he's not in the front arc, I can really hurt him. My Gatling phasers are better than your Gatling phasers. Alright, so we've dealt with that. The Sentinel has been defeated. And so now we have to blow up the planet. Well, steal the planet. But it's the same idea. So now we just need to rush on in to range of the planet itself. We'll fire all of our plasma torpedoes. The shields will go down. It'll be beautiful. Uh, we may need to cloak on our way in. That is something we may have to do. But come on. We are so ridiculously powerful in terms of just assaulting a single target that it's almost unfunny. Now, I did put up a vote over on the Discord as to whether or not we keep this whole frame, since there's only a couple of episodes left in the series, and things have been interesting. The people on YouTube, or at least the person who mentioned it on YouTube, uh, says he prefers this perf this style of vessel, which, you know, I can definitely see the aesthetic like of this one, because it is not bad. Uh, it's just probably me being a little bit jaded. So it's a very nice ship, does sort of straddle the line between TNG and TMP, which, you know, not terrible. Uh, however, over on the Discord, it's been much more, well, a little bit more in favor of the other design that I was showing off just a little bit. Uh, basically, it's a more modern looking, not Warbird per se, but it's in that vein. So we'll fire a whole bunch of plasma torpedoes and manage to damage the planet quite nicely. Oh, that's beautiful. So much damage already on through, and we're just gonna skulk a little bit closer. 
We don't need to. We, we honestly don't need to. Because at the end of the day, our plasma torpedoes will be at full damage at a range of 10 without any trouble. So we can just sit here, wait for him to waste away his firepower, bouncing off our forward shield, which we don't really care about because he can't get a good target solution on us anyway, as long as we're in cloak. And then we'll decloak and prepare to fire another round of massive plasma. I love it. It's so beautiful. Oh yeah, this planet is almost flat. <laughs> there can't be much less to, left of it now. I'm seeing a single... Single phaser four and what appears to be two phaser G's, so not all that much, plus you know all this hellbores, but that may be more of a function of we don't actually know what he's got left. We're gonna start getting a little bit closer to him because we're gonna probably you know drop the cloak and just send over the marines to Mustafar over here at some time soon. But one more salvo ought to do it. So D cloak and prepare to engage at full power. And the last of our plasma salvos, which I think we'll need. Oh yeah, that that's look at those damage numbers. Look at those damage numbers! And we're technically a heavy cruiser. Did I mention that? Uh, Marines. Go, go steal a planet, please. I'm not sure what happened there, but we're not going to complain, I suppose. And let's start accelerating and getting on out of here, because we don't need to be here anymore. The planet's conquered. It can't defend itself anywhere. Oh, wow, he still had a phaser four to burn. Not bad. I actually managed to harm our aft shield quite nicely. But our Marines will finish securing the planet in but a moment's notice. Oh, it looks like he's repairing them. Yeah. Thank you for fixing them for us. That'll make it much easier to actually defend the planet. All right, so the planet has been successfully taken. That'll reduce the Amber defense even more as our monstrous little beastie continues to move away. The Flama Pena has proven to be incredibly powerful. No one can stand against us. Oh, an anomaly mission. I don't think so. We'll take the patrol. I'd much rather take a patrol any day because the patrols are way more fun than the anomaly. The problem with the anomaly is you just shut off halfway through the battle for no apparent reason and that's not fun. You lose all sense of maneuverability, of aggression, and now you're just sort of waiting. And it's not even like, oh well, now it's fair because now it just feels unfun. Because yeah, both sides have to suffer from the anomaly, but let's be honest, it's not all that fun. Were you moving away? Because I saw a tab over here. I'm quite positive of it. Let's increase the speed of time because we will get towards the enemy in relatively short term. Oh, apparently not. Thought I saw one. Anyway, so we got a single heavy cruiser that we got to deal with. So don't know what type you are. According to the fleet screen, we are currently dealing with an MHX, not a big capital X, telling us that it's going to be quite deadly. Uh, could even be absurdly deadly. We will find out in short order. Let's accelerate the ship a little bit, and I'm not currently buffing up my shield. So buff up the shield, reinforce, and duck into cloak. Aha, you fired at far too effective range. We will now decloak to fire our pseudoplasma torpedo, and then we'll recloak. As is not really our custom, we're sort of toying with things a little bit. Because we have a lot of abilities to do a lot of things. But as we drop back into cloak, this will hopefully make it so that you can't actually effectively engage me at all. You only have two fighters though, so that kind of makes you incredibly... <laughs> and you are just a mass fusion boat. Oh, you have two groups of fighters. I see them now. So a mass fusion boat is probably terrible to actually try and engage us with because we have way more firepower. Just saying, we're kind of badass. There's no real shame in admitting that because at the end of the day, we have way more damage than you can put out. Okay, starting to accelerate. We got to get close to these guys so they waste their fire on us sometime soon. You've shot, now you shoot. Now we decloak and we prepare to fire. Now the timing is not quite what we would want it to be, obviously, because, you know, that... That looked impressive, and it did a lot of damage to the forward shield, but that did more. A lot more. That did 211 damage through, and, you know, shattered his hull. Oh, did I mention shattered his hull? No, 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 he's just gone. A single pass through was all that was required to completely wipe out this hydrogen vessel. So, not too terrible. Uh, there's ways we could refine that for sure, especially if we stayed at high speed, or at least was able to get to high speed ball and cloak while holding enveloping plasma torpedoes. Because then we could get around behind him, spin, fire into his back, might be a little bit more dangerous. Managed to neutralize the tile on there, but we're going to ignore it for now, because the most important thing right now is removing his ability to exude his influence through planets. So once we steal all the planets, he can't do that anymore. Shipyard assaults? Eh, okay. We're good at it, but it's not something we'd prefer to do. We'd rather do an assault planet, because assault planets are... They take less time. Ooh, we've got an X-type heavy cruiser across from us. So now the battle is truly joined. Let us maximize our forward shield so we're fully prepared to go. Get our speed up to a blistering speed of, what is it, 9? 10? 10. We're being escorted today by the IKV Dire Slayer and nobody else. Dire Slayer off of there is a fast-type heavy cruiser and the enemy is... Oh no, it's just a full-on XCA. 
Hey, ew, this could get dangerous and deadly, and we'd prefer it not to, but hey, them's the brakes. So we'll probably just rip open all of his shields and let our fast cruiser probably tear him apart bit by bit. It'll be pretty good at that, I anticipate. So I may actually also experiment with lobbing a pair of R-type plasma torpedoes at a slightly longer range in order to give us a little bit more protection as we move forward. So yeah, th those star faces are protected by nothing. Let's go up to one point of ECM and prepare to eliminate him from the equation far now. And cook. So that did prompt the response of immediately shooting everything he's got. Oh crap, I forgot. We're actually not charged. We're actually not charged. We are, we got in way too close on this one. Way too in on the ground floor. So our plasma torpedoes will not be ready for another turn and a half. That's not good because he's exceedingly powerful. I'm gonna just not sit here. I'm gonna hide for a bit. I don't want to engage this. <laughs> not until my plasma torpedoes are ready to go. Once they are ready to go, great damage can be dealt. But until that time happens, uh, we're kind of helpless. I mean, yeah, we do have an additional eight phasers, but it's only eight phasers, and that is not a significant amount of fire. Okay, so he fires everything out, and then he fired everything out, and our plausible torpedoes are almost ready to go. So get ready to engage. Okay, he fired most of the rest of his stuff, and by the time we decloak, the plasmas will be ready to go, so... Eat suns, sir. So plasma off over towards him. Let's see how he wants to handle this one. He will turn away from it, and... Not gonna help him. 149 damage. Got right on through, and his fighters are just basically sitting on top of me. Now, we can't do anything for the next several turns, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just slowly increase the speed of my ship, and I'm gonna skulk on out of here. Now, if we shut off our enveloping plasma torpedo mode, we will be able to do, you know, more, but in terms of speed, I would rather have my enveloping plasma torpedoes ready, especially since I'm baiting all of these fighters away from the XCF. So the fast cruiser actually could do a fairly significant amount of damage should it choose to, and it is, because he's got no shields. Just makes him incredibly vulnerable at this point. So if these fighters were smart, they'd be definitely going for the Dire Slayer, but since they're not that smart, they're currently hovering around me, and I'm just, my only goal at this point is to build a little bit of distance in so that these continue to come after me and don't ever have a chance to go after the Dire Slayer. There we go. So the fortress has been taken care of. We can now decloak and increase the speed of time. We're squaring off against a Federation Stardock, which means it's going to be equipped with, as you can see, all the missiles. So if we actually want to, you know, save the ship, we have to go at a slower speed, but it doesn't really matter. Well, it would be helpful to have him in future battles, but he should be able to handle all of this danger without so much as a care in the world. And it's a little bit annoying that we can't, because if we increase the speed of time to the speed we should be able to go at, suddenly nothing works. Come over to my point defense, turn that on, so that we've actually got some protection ready for us. Now it's easy for us to knock out the Stardock, relatively anyway. Uh, especially if we can keep these missiles coming at it from our stern angle, because as long as they come in from behind, we actually have, you know, two Gatling phasers which will cover it, which is great. So on the speed of time, so on the speed of the ship, and fire uh, pseudo plasma torpedoes. There we go, that'll do it. So prepare the phases. Phasers are locked on. Target destroyed, and we're almost down to zero speed, which is lovely, so we just need to wait for that to, to disappear once it finishes flickering, putting out all the last of the radiation and power that it had in its coils. Why will my plasma... Oh, because I'm not targeting anything. Fa ah, plasma TTPs. TTPs? Not sure what that is. Torpedoes. Okay, here's the speed of time. Since they don't appear to actually be protecting anything all that useful, by the time we get over here, we should be mostly ready. Our XCF is cruising. Quite slowly, but he's cruising. So we'll be able to handle the rest of the Starnox in short order. There goes what looked to be any... Wait, these have impulse drives? Or are those tractor beam emitters? They gotta be tractor beam emitters. They're red like impulse drives, though. So that's an interesting thing to deal with. Uh, let's kick up the speed a little bit more if we, we can absolutely manage it, because all of our phasers are fully charged. Makes it a lot easier to, you know, get onto target. Prepare the pseudo torpedo, and we will bait out all of his defenses. Uh, we got a little bit too close. A little bit too close. A little bit too close. Okay, now stop. Ugh, slow turn. Uh, we do have to fire. You know what? Just, just if you got a pseudo torpedo, fire it. Okay, that did nothing. That did something. Wait for it to flicker away. And fire all of our parts. Lovely. On to the last one. So hopefully he will actually destroy it by the time we actually get over there. That would be ideal. That way I don't have to spend the entire trip actually getting into range. But I kind of doubt it. So we'll just cruise on along at our speed of 29 or so. And once we get in range, then we can actually do some interesting things to him. 
Although those missiles, we have like no chance of getting through. <laughs> he is way short on the number of missiles required in order to actually, you know, take care of this. Slow down the speed of time. Just so we can start to slow down the speed of the ship. Prepare the other pseudo torpedo. Just any pseudo torpedo. There we go. There's the other one. And we'll come into a nice, safe little break. Phasers. Destroyed. Lovely. Target the star dock and all stop, please. Before we hit range of zero. And emergency stop, and the attack shift is gone. Goodbye. Nice to know you. Alright, so all the Stardocks have been wiped out. That has been taken care of in record time. Well, actually, no, probably not, but 50, almost 6 minutes is not terrible for one of these. And it's not even like we have to you know, rope it up a lot with the enemy. It just has to do with getting to the star dock, stopping there, getting past its defenses, getting back to the star dock, stopping there, getting past its defenses, and having to travel between all three of them. Which is why I'm taking patrol instead of a ship of assault. <laughs> Patrols are way more fun, because patrols are an actual just duel. You see the enemy, you fight the enemy, you don't have to mess with the enemy. There was another heavy cruiser off over there. It may not be a full-on heavy cruiser, but we're going to treat it as such. Because that's going to be unpleasant. Alright, get ourselves up to full speed. Also get ourselves up to full forward shield reinforcement as we prepare to engage from the maximum range. Increase the speed of time. We do need to wallow away from him a little bit just to give our plasma torpedoes time to charge. Click on this to make sure it is actually charging. It was not! <laughs> That's not good. So we're just going to build in a little bit of time. There is a light cruiser. It's an Orion one, so it's basically ignorable. And we'll just sort of cruise along to the side while we wait for systems to come back online. We're going to go up to four electronic countermeasure in order to really mess with him. Just see if we can't keep him from being able to be at all effective. Go over to our power screen so we can see how much power we actually have going for us. And also prepare the pseudo plasma torpedo. Alright, so he has fired and he has missed. And I'm going to fire the pseudo torpedo now. And I'm going to immediately break off. Ooh, more lightning. And we're going to start rushing on away from him just in order to see if I can't take a little bit of time. We could also, you know, cloak and skull can do all that. I don't think it'll be required, at least not for this target. So that'll allow us to get our nice out and in maneuver set, and that'll also position us quite nicely to handle these little guys because they'll basically run us over, and when they do, they won't be able to touch me. Cloak. Slip in on the cloak so the enemy can't actually touch you. You've been damaged, and you'll fire your phasers, and now we'll decloak. We'll fire the plasma torpedoes as soon as we decloak, because by the time. Wow! Accurate fire coming out of cloak. Get us up to a speed of three, that's the three. And cook. And eat your own plasma, buddy. Got him. Lovely. All right, so we've taken out the first one. That's not all that t terribly surprising, but we will now sort of skulk around a little bit. We've got four points of power into the electronic countermeasure. I'm going to skulk super slowly, because mainly he can't actually defend himself all that well against me. I mean, he can fire his phasers, but I've got enough electronic countermeasure. That shouldn't actually be too much of a problem. So I'm just going to sit here, wait for him to sort of waste away. I mean, I could do all kinds of crazy things to actually try to engage him, but I don't really feel the necessary need to. There goes a high energy turn off of him, which I think was kind of dumb, but hey, I mean, that's your strategy if you want to use it. And okay, so slow down the speed of time. Oh, I was hoping that he was going to break away from me, but it did not happen. Okay, I'll stop. Let him just slip out ahead of me. Let him fire whatever weapons he wants to. And once he slips ahead of me, we can actually engage him. He's actually starting to increase in speed, which is good. Decloak. Prepare the plasma torpedoes. I would... Oh, you jerk. So I can't shoot at him when he's this close. If we shoot at him this close, what we'll take is splashback damage. And the splashback damage is particularly unpleasant because... What that will do is it'll harm us with one-fourth the amount of damage that we put out. So we decloaked in time, we high energy turned in time, and now... Try to be... <laughs> Fire the pseudos! Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. That's we, why we broke off the attack at the last minute. It's like, wait a second, this is not going to go the way you think. <laughs> so we are just going to accelerate, get ourselves partially distanced from him. Uh, unfortunately, I've used up my high energy turn which I'm not willing to risk a breakdown on a 68% chance. We're just going to drift on away from him and then come back on in. By the time we actually line him up, we may have things. We're a fairly nimble cruiser because we're a Romulan design. Romulans and Klingons, probably the more nimble races, although you can also make an argument for the cat people. They're also fairly nimble as well. But we should be able to outturn even this light cruiser since we have the speed advantage and he doesn't. Now he's going to get up to our maneuvering bracket soon, but if he doesn't do something really quick, he's not going to get away. And there goes four plasma torpedoes. Actually, one of ours did not actually shoot. So, you're gone. Nice and taken care of. Thanks to our 
absurdly high levels of firepower. <laughs> oh, this, this heavy bombardment cruiser is amazing, and there's no lie in that. It's a phenomenal ship. Alrighty, so the Empire defense of this planet is down to 15. Three more missions at least, well, not at least, at most, in order to actually grab it. Well, four at most, in order to grab it. Once it does, that will be probably the last planet for the Hydra Star Kingdom, and then we can just blitz our way through the rest of these missions. If not next episode, then the one after that, likely, is when this will be over. And the next campaign will be the ISC, but it'll be something a little bit special from the ISC, so look forward to that. I'm not going to say what it is, but when you find out, I hope that you will all enjoy. Anyway, I've been Tarek. If you like what you've been seeing, hit, hit that like button and subscribe. Before I see a notification every time it's one of these videos, press that little bell icon, leave a comment, and join us for the stream today at 5 o'clock. We have a stream on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 5. Uh, we play a game called Rogue Tech, which is Battletech on the computer, which is amazing. We currently are playing through our clan campaign, Apollo's Vipers, which has been a lot of fun, and we'd love to see you there. And I will see you all in the next episode.